Hi, welcome. I'm Tommy Holston. This is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast Interview Edition. Today I will talk to the super chill dude Matt Ryan. We will talk about his career before he started creating beautiful pieces of art and of course pop culture in general. So stay tuned, head over to our Instagram profile at DropMacOfficial or check us out on YouTube for the video version and don't forget to smash that like button. Now let's get started and welcome Matt. How you doing man? Doing great, Tom. How are you, buddy? I can't complain. As I, as I told you before, I had a long day, so people don't mind the the eye the, the, the bags under my eyes and stuff like that. Ah, you look <laughs> thank good. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, man. Um, you had a release yesterday. We we're recording this on a Tuesday. Um, there's some more coming. Um, as you teased just uh, in general, and uh, yeah, you had a had a very cool release. We're gonna talk about it in a sec. Um, but before. We are going to have a little speed round. And uh, yeah, I hope you're quick on your feet, which you said you're not. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> okay, we're going to do 10 words or 10, 10 things to associate with. And um, yeah, let's let's start out right away. Um, first one is color. Red. Favorite Avenger. None. None? Okay, that's interesting. Um, favorite holiday destination? Newfoundland. Um, favorite Tarantino movie? Oh, see? I'm not good on my feet. Favorite Tarantino. I'll say True Romance, even though he just okay, wrote it. Okay, perfect. Um, favorite tale? As in myth, legend, whatever you like. Jack and the Beanstalk. All right. That's what my parents told me growing up. <laughs> Samurai or Ninja? Ninja. All righty. You're, you're actually the first one who said Ninja, by the way. Um, por- yeah. yeah. <laughs> Portray or Landscape? Uh, oh, that's a landscape. I love atmosphere. All righty. Um, your favorite Cobra Kai character? Oh, Johnny. All righty. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. Uh, your favorite book? Preacher. Preacher. Uh, and last but not least, your favorite horror movie? Oh, Nightmare on Elm Street. There you go. You heard it here first, people. Speed round is done. You're you can relax now. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, not <laughs> as uh, uh, on your toes uh, <laughs> with the with the next <laughs> things we're gonna talk about. Um, as I do in the, in the, the, sec, the second segment, as always, when I pick three of your artworks that I want to talk a little bit closer about, which people maybe have not as much talked about or maybe that I really want to know something about. And uh, of course, of course, I want to start out with something really cool you did basically, <laughs> you released yesterday, and that, that will be also uh, in the um, release episode that I'm going to do next week with James. And yeah, it is your Cobra Kai soundtrack. Um, let's talk about this. I mean, there's a lot of elements to it. Um, you, mm-hmm. Just walk us through it. What? what uh, how did? How did this happen? How did this came about? Um. Well, it's kind of complicated how it came came about. But I'll say, word got through the grapevine that I loved Cobra mm-hmm. Kai, and um, so um, Mo over at Mondo, the uh, living legend himself, he um, reached out to me and he's like, hey, do you want to do the soundtrack? And I was like, absolutely. Um, I'm a huge, huge fan of the show. And so um, I didn't know what it would entail right off the bat that it was going to be as um, wide scope of a release, like, or sorry, not wide scope, but um, it just as large of, of a package yeah. as it was. But that was even more exciting because you get to like, do a whole bunch of different elements and I always find that really exciting about doing vinyl. That's so. great. But did you did also did you do also the cassette and everything? Mm-hmm. How yeah. uh, what's on the cassette? Is it the soundtrack just on cassette or is it something you picked? Oh no, the cassette is uh, I believe it's extended slash unreleased versions of um songs created um, by the composers oh, okay. uh Zach and Leo for the score. So I think there are, there are extended versions of unreleased songs, or they just could be extended. I can't remember yeah. exactly. If there's a lot of in, there's a lot of music on yeah. that on that 
release, so it's hard to kind of oh, keep okay. track. Okay, so um, why did you choose the? Uh, for example, when when we when we look at the the covers of like the the the, the single covers and individual covers of those uh, three LPs. Um, where does uh, the inspiration come from? We have we have like Cobra Kai, obviously the the snake with a fist in it, and then you have the fist uh, uh, single out, and then you have something totally different, which is like, I think my favorite motive the the very simple minimal style of uh, the car and the that represents the Miyagi dojo, dojo perfect, I think. Oh yeah, um, so that's kind of interesting because um, I kind of learned something on on this project. So, I mean, right off the bat, when they told me, okay, we're going to do three LPs and each one's going to kind of, um, uh, be paired with the music style of like the art has to kind of correlate to the music style of each mm -hmm. LP. So obviously the first one was going to be Cobra Kai. So in my head, I just tried to approach it like, okay, if you, um, if, if Johnny Lawrence commissioned me to create an album cover, you know, what would, how ridiculous and an 80s metal, you know, would it be? He'd say, you know, it'd be a chrome cobra with a fist punching out mm. of its mouth and lightning. And, you know, it would just have to be ridiculous, you know, but in, in you know, the most awesome way. So that, that kind of came to me right away. It's one of those initial yeah. ideas where um, usually the, the first idea that hits you is always the best. You know what I mean? It's it's the most pure. Um so that's kind of where we, where that one came, which just kind of popped into my head, thinking of badass '80s metal band covers, mm. you know. Um, as far as Miyagi Do goes, uh, that one was a bit different because initially, I guess I had taken the Johnny approach and kind of applied that to Miyagi Do, but through the eyes of um, mm -hmm. Larusso and um, Daniel Larusso. Um, so originally, there was a whole kind of other um, pitch for that that was a little bit more airy, a little bit more. Um, uh, I'd say more, uh, what's the best way to describe it? It, it aesthetically looked more like signage and, and, and decor you'd see in, in, in the actual Miyagi-Do yeah. dojo. Um, you know, um, but what happens, I, I pitched that and based on the kind of tones of the music, um, it was brought to my attention, I, I believe from, um, God, I think it was Mo who, who brought it up um, as, as other ideas, other directions to go for Miyagi-Do was, um, the Japanese city pop records from okay, the eighties, yeah. which was, you know, pop music. Right. And, um, and I was the first I've ever known of it. It's weird. Cause I recognized the artwork, the style of artwork before, but I didn't know what from, and then I was introduced to, uh, Hiroshi mm -hmm. Nagai who does legendary, brilliant artists who I'm now in love yeah. with, like just from working on this project that was heavily inspired by him. Um, I've like fallen in love with his art. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I was inspired by that to, Again, sort of, co you know, I keep wanting to say correlate, but it, it just to suit the music for that specific LP. It's very poppy. It's very upbeat. Mm -hmm. Has that '80s flair to it. It just suits. Is, is the that is that um, it, when it comes to the soundtrack? Did it what did they release it in like three CDs uh, CDs before, or how how could how did you um, how did you know what was on the soundtrack? Like, did you hear, could you hear it before, or how how was that? Yeah, they sent. I, I heard some of it, but they essentially broke it down. Like it, it, from um, Zach and Leo, the two uh, composers who who wrote the music, the way they they had it broken down in their head that they wanted it to be three LPs. So it would be, you know, Cobra Cobra Kai music, um, Miyagi Do music, and then there would be um, tournament. Well, final fights we call it music. So the in every you know season there's the yeah, big yeah, fights yeah. and it's the themes from that. Um, so they wanted it curated like that, like. So it had to be thematically relevant across all three LPs. That's how they had it planned in their head. So it was up to me to just come up with mm -hmm. the ideas to, you know, portray that. To did did the music. you pick also the colorways for the LPs that like the actual like vinyl or how? No, no. I think uh, I, I'm not sure who decided on the on the colorways. Okay, but they look they look really good though. I, they're very fitting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah my my lap. I imagine that's well, probably. <laughs> My last question on the soundtrack uh, uh, or on, on all this stuff is what would you put on a tape for Johnny that he plays in his car? Name like one or two th songs maybe that you would put on a mixtape for him. Oh, man. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got the music background. I think that's a fair question. 
Well, Ario Speedwagon, obviously, that's that's one of his favorites. Um, so anything by Ario Speedwagon, maybe some like Wasp or Warrant, okay, or White. I don't know. Anything you know, Twisted Sister, maybe. All right, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, and what 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 would what be would be on your personal Johnny mixtape? Like you know, like kind of the same thing. If you would do this for you. Oh well, well, I used to make mixtapes when I was a kid. Yeah, me too. I, I, I've done um, mixtapes. Think... <laughs> But what yeah. would be on right and, now? Uh, I love making mixtapes now. <laughs> right yeah. now, as so a like grown-up, current music. <laughs> as a grown-up, um, well, I mean, in terms of music I'm listening to right now, honestly, like I've become such like an old jaded musician that I I, I don't like much beyond what I grew up on these days. Okay, you know, what, I'm in that place where I'm what like. Was last... Everything's not as good. <laughs> What was last but, in your rotation? But right now, but there are. Right now, I'm listening to uh, a band called Loathe. Okay. I let it in, and it took everything. That's a great record. Another band called Spirit Box, which is a Canadian metal okay. band. They're really great. And uh, I'll pick a third one. I'll say um, one of my favorite bands uh, right now, Dead Sarah. They're really great as well from LA. Right. Don't know any of those, but <laughs> that's why we differ in music taste, I guess. <laughs> Check them, check them out. Check them. I'll, I'll, I'll try, but I, don't, I think what, what they're, they're like rock metal. What, what's the, what's the direction? Dead Sarah is like alternative rock, okay, I would say. Okay. Um, Spirit Box and Loathe are, are on, yes, the heavier side of, of metal for All sure. All right, okay, I'll, I'll try to listen to it, but I can't promise anything. I'm, <laughs> I'm really, I really like jazz and soul and hip hop and rap, like the, like the, uh, like Anderson Pack, Anderson yeah, Pack yeah. side of things, you know. Uh, so yeah 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 this this is more my speed i mean i grew up in in the 90s yeah. so my my i mean my tastes are kind of across the yeah. board but i'm you know i'm always partial to smashing pumpkins and silver yeah. chair and i know those you know bands from that era yeah i mean yeah. I, i grew up in that, <laughs> so it's all good <laughs> yeah yeah 90s was the best yeah, it man. was good times man i had good times in the 90s like 98 that was like the the year I I started like that. The, that's the story I uh, I uh, the, the I told on uh, when we had Eric and Rob on from Mondo, <laughs> and uh, this that's when I started collecting vinyl um, back then. Uh, It's 98, 98, eh? Yeah, yeah. it's uh, been a minute, <laughs> but yeah, that's when I started. I like one yeah. of my first LPs was um, uh, Africa Bambara Zulu was it Zulu Nation or some some something else. It wasn't Zulu Nation. Oh yeah, yeah, I know that. But right. it was that, and also one yeah. of the first ones was uh, the Three Feet High and Rising De La Soul LP, which is a oh, very nice. great LP. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, you've got thank you, taste. sir. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Moving on to another piece of you that I actually own, and uh, it is very, very beautiful. It is the Destroyer piece you did in landscape. Your favorite. Your oh, favorite. Yeah. Yeah. format <laughs> um let's yeah. hear about this one i mean i love this one i have it up i had it uh like there's there's actually a funny story um i don't know if, i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna uh, name names here but uh, a friend of mine uh he uh went over to my place because he and his like girlfriend at the time they split up And then he picked somebody up uh, and he had, because uh, I, I went to my girlfriend and he had the weekend for himself. Uh, and then I have the Destroyer print in the bedroom. And he brings this girl mm -hmm. to my place and uh, yeah, and she was like, oh, he has Destroyer, a Destroyer like thing. She, he, she didn't know what, what this was, but she just read Destroyer and in the bedroom. So she was like, <laughs> Must be a special dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty funny have, having this in a bedroom. But the colors just fit perfectly in my bedroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's funny because you know uh, I know that you're uh, kind of um, uh, nitpicky when it comes to sort of uh, your your color wheel when you choose to put things up on the wall. <laughs> for example, right behind you. And it's funny because I mean I sent you some pictures of my yeah. studio, uh, which I'm, I don't know if yeah, you're going to show, show later or not. Yeah. But if you look around the room, there is a palette. That's good. That that you know is consistent. That it's kind of like relaxing, though. Is that is it like that for you? Like if yeah, I have it, a bunch of posters feels, that were all over the place, it feels it's zen, like, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And if I change out something with one color, I got to find something that kind of it all fits mm -hmm. in the same wheelhouse. Exactly. You know? Yeah. 
So, yeah. so how did this destroyer piece uh, come upon? Um, Lana just uh, pitched the title to me, and uh, I hadn't seen the film, so I was sent a screener, and uh, I thought it was a yeah, fantastic well, film. I thought Nicole was incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, actually, it's funny because, and this has happened a few times to me, but um, where I saw the trailer, I think it was the trailer. Mm-hmm. Was it the trailer? We'll say it's the trailer. <laughs> and um, there's a brief moment of a shot of the coyote. Mm-hmm walking across the sort of under uh, yeah. overpass or underneath the overpass when she's in the car. And right there, that's when the idea came to me of like, okay, well, let's not put Nicole Kidman on the poster. Let's lean more conceptual mm-hmm. here. And you almost, you know, use the, the coyote as a representation of her, as symbolism of her yeah. character, you know? And then, um, and then I think the idea just with the amount of like firearms in the films and how violent it is and, it just building the whole city up as, you know, um, skyscraping ammunition, you know, it was just really interesting to me, but then sort of juxtaposing it with a pink and purple yeah. palette. It just, it's kind of like a bunch of weird ideas that just kind of came together really well. It took me a long time. That poster took a long I mean, time. It's- um, I remember I painstakingly went over that thing. It's an awesome poster, but, uh, so I'm, yeah. I'm glad that I could gra- could have grabbed Thanks. one of these. And uh, I think they're still available on, on the Mondo website, so people get on that. I mean, I've yeah. I've shown this I had last year um, when I had the poster posse on Don and Rebecca, and uh, we had like later on we had like a, a like a we called it a f- flat file fight. And uh, cause we like, we both like to show the flat file and then we, we were on, on, I think we, we did it on Instagram and then, uh, we were like both interchanging, like, like who picked the poster and then the, some, the, the, the other person had to come up with another poster from the flat file and to, to battle it basically. Mm-hmm. And I pulled this one out and, and oh, everybody loved this one and they didn't know about it. So people, if you see this now, go, cool. go to, go to the Mondo website and grab this one. I mean, it's an, it's an incredible mm-hmm. print. I cannot recommend it enough and I would never part way with, with this one. Oh, thanks man. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome, man. Um, Last but not least, one I didn't know you did um, that I want to talk about, though, is your beautiful Sandlot. Oh, yeah, Sandlot. I I would say this this one is very different from the other stuff you did. Um, mm-hmm. in, in terms of mm-hmm. colors, in uh, the, the the in terms of topic, because you more I would put you more into the horror, darker kind of um, area. Because like people people ask, and we're going to talk about that later. What people from the from the fan side ask, what horror project you want to do? So they really see you as a horror uh, like darker kind of guy uh, doing art. But yeah, the sand. Yeah, <laughs> Let, let's hear about that. Well, it's funny because I always try to. I mean, I definitely got my footing in, in doing um, film art with, with, with horror films. I mean, there's just so much it mood and, and stuff to work with yeah. there. But, like, you know, my, my favorite film of all time is Bill and Ted's Bogus yeah. Journey. So Indeed. it's not even nowhere near a horror film, you know. And Sandlot was also one of those films where me growing up, I think for a lot of people growing up in the 90s, as we were talking about, was a big movie and uh, helped shape you, yeah. you know. And it's so for me to hear that I could do a Sandlot poster when when the opportunity arose, I was like, yeah, obviously that's like, that's part of a huge chunk of my childhood, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, um, with that one, I just, I just tried to make it fun and yeah, something, something maybe I could hang in my kid's room for once, you know, (laughs) like there's nothing, I haven't done any, you know, very much Disney stuff or anything like that, or, or just, you know, appropriate things that, that are, that are fun and colorful and bright and, yeah, you know that I'd want to like put in my kids room or something, but um, yeah, I think that's that's a misconception about me too, though, was that because I work in lots of deep shadows and dark subject matter in terms of films mm. and, and things, that that's like what I want to do, or that's all that I am, you know. But I've like to be completely honest with you, I've been trying to get a Pretty Woman poster made forever. All right, is that so? Yeah, well, I've had this great concept in mind, and I watched the film with my wife a little while uh-huh. ago, and I was like, man, this is still still a great film, and I just love Julia Roberts so much, <laughs> and I, I I had this concept that came to my brain that I really want to do one day, you know, so you never know, right? I'm kind of all over okay, the map. Okay, people, so uh, you heard here first, make it happen in the, in the fans group, private commission, whatever you need to do, 
<laughs> the, the the pretty the pretty uh, the pretty mad poster. We want to see that. Hashtag pretty mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's like, yeah, versatility is fun. You know, it's fun yeah, to step outside your comfort zone and and to work in in different worlds. You know. Speaking of different speaking of important. different worlds here, I mean, you've done multiple wrestling posters. Are you a big wrestling fan, mm. or is it just a coincidence? Um complete transparency like i kind of stopped watching wrestling probably around the late 90s maybe okay, yeah. you know um when wcw started getting big the hollywood hogan that whole era of stuff i did i that's when i kind of fell off um but as a as a young kid like early 90s mm-hmm. that was that and like ninja turtles you know that was it for me those two things you know i loved and and so when i do when i did the um the first wrestling poster that I did, which was a WrestleMania six with Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan, I did that one because I remember. Well, I vaguely, I don't remember that match. I was too young, but yeah. I was there. My dad took me. Oh, to that's that. crazy. Um, I was like two or three. Like I was so small. Um, I still have a wallet, a Hulk Hogan wallet that I got though for awesome. some reason <laughs> um, from from that. But um, and so again, that's similar to the Sandlot thing. It's just tapping into that nostalgia. Mm-hmm. It's just going back and revisiting some sometimes from growing up and you know and then it kind of spawned into something else but I, I tried to keep the wrestling posters that i do something that's somewhat close to me in okay. terms of what i remember my knowledge my love of that era so like working on a, a current match wouldn't mean very much ah, to me I see. yeah, you know yeah totally I mean? totally um coming coming back to one of the speed round questions uh you said uh, no avenger because you're not into avengers but uh but you love the 90s are you not an X Men '92 fan, then, because it's the '90s. That's that was that was my '90s. <laughs> so when I said when I when I said none, that was just me being a contrarian for for okay. funny. No, you know what the thing is is I um I never saw any of the Avengers films mm-hmm. until a few months ago. Okay, I sat down and I was like, you know what I'm gonna do after my long work day? I usually go and sit on the couch and try to turn yeah. my brain off. And um and everyone's in bed and i just turn the lights off and watch a movie and uh i was like you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just start watching the avengers mm-hmm. films like this is a, such an important um film franchise in history and i think i need to i should you know know what i know yeah. about it right and i was like fuck these are good these are good <laughs> movies you know what i mean like i think they're they're fantastic especially like the last the yeah. last two uh, um, you mean yeah, and okay, game yeah, and infinity okay. war yeah 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 um <laughs> uh, fantastic so, um, but still, in yeah, in terms of if, if I could go back and uh, re-answer, I'd probably say, I mean, X Men. Okay, well, you you can't touch Wolverine. Of course, X Men '92, the cartoon was was yeah. incredible. Like we all watched that growing up. Um, I would have to say, I love X Men, but he, but or sorry, um, Wolverine, but he's not in the Avengers. So out of the Avengers, I'd probably have to say. <laughs> Spidey? Man, it's tough. Because that was also 90s. Yeah, games. probably yeah. Spidey. Right. Yeah, I probably have to say Spidey. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Again, just because of growing yeah, up with it. Right. You know, it's it's not really uh, a constant thing in my life now is, you know, Marvel Marvel mm-hmm. stuff. But but looking back, that's probably the character I And since here. you like the, the new stuff as well, is, is there going to be a Matt Ryan Tobin poster? Probably not. Probably okay, not. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay um let's let's hear something about uh your career before you turned poster artist uh or i, I, I don't know maybe you did this kind of at the same time but uh let's hear about that because you've been in a band yeah yeah i was in a band straight out of high school um i actually didn't finish high school because i went on tour instead okay. of finishing that's high school. interesting um yeah, well, no, it's it's on a technicality. Technically, I I, I finished mm-hmm. high school, but uh, the course counselor kind of messed things oh, up, okay. and uh, it had to be rectified. And then I never fixed it, so <laughs> I just, <laughs> you know. But yeah, uh, I think I went on my first tour when I was seventeen, yeah. seventeen years old, I think, seventeen in the summer. And um, yeah, I was in a band called Dead and Divine for about. 10, 12 years, 10, 10, 11 years. God, I don't even remember. It's been okay. so long. Yeah. My band was called Den Divine. And then, um, you know, we had some, some moderate success and got through some pretty wonderful tours. We did f- four or five albums mm-hmm. and, uh, 
then around 2012 i called it quits on that band just because the the music industry politics were, were yeah. killing me um the business of it was really sucking the life out of me we weren't the band wasn't getting along um there were a lot okay. of factors well, so i just wanted to start something what was your new. part in the band yeah. which, uh, which... i was the the singer songwriter okay. and did you so i uh, live did you play I, anything else as, as well or because i yeah, okay. I play guitar. So I wrote I wrote all the all majority of the music mm -hmm. myself, um, and I performed the vocals. And but live it was just vocals. I just it was never a guitar singer okay. live. So I would just get up and perform. Vocals. And um, speaking of like writing, is that something you would want to pursue since you work with a lot of films and art and pop culture right now? Well, I've always yeah, I've always loved writing. I've loved poetry and writing lyrics is the, the thing I probably took the most pride in out of uh, anything I did in the band. Like that was very therapeutic for me and very um, creatively fulfilling as well. Um, but, you know, it's like uh, that band broke up and I, I started an, another band um, called Ritual yeah. and uh, we had an album and it, it, it did OK, but it was more of like a, a bookend project for me in terms of like. I got to do this for myself without all these other people from my other band. I have to, I don't want to have people um, in the band kind of controlling what yeah. I wanted to create. So, um, but that band's kind of on a hiatus ever since I had oh, kids. Okay. So I, which I'm going, going to answer your question, which is that um, I'm still writing, like I'm still writing music mm -hmm. and writing lyrics and working on another album, but it's just like, there's no rush. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, to get it done. You know have, what I mean? Have you seen uh, the sound of metal then? I have, and I absolutely loved it, but it was actually terrifying. Right? <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, it's probably this, one of the scariest movies I've ever I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, in terms of um, just how I can relate to being that mm -hmm. music is the most important thing to me in yeah. probably <laughs> my life <laughs> next to my family, uh, um, even though those two things don't really relate, but it's just that music is everything to me. So that film... Um, yeah. Yeah, that was like really hard to have, watch, but but beautifully made. Have you had any problems before in your life, like with any senses, like losing them? Um, I have. I know that. Well, I haven't been diagnosed, but I definitely have some some hearing issues. Um, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife tells me I do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, I, my hearing is definitely not as great as it should be. I know that for sure from not performing with earplugs over the years and not giving a shit about that aspect of my health okay, at yeah. all. Um, but other than that, not really. Because okay, because I could really relate as, as well, but not from the perspective of music because I um, I have eye herpes. It's like another like virus, herpes virus, but it's like on your on your cornea. And it, it, oh, it like, wow. you get scars on there. And then basically you, uh -huh. you start losing vision. It's like super bad. And no like the way. first doctor uh, like made a false diagnose uh, um, for what I have. And it got worse, worse, worse. And I like both eyes were down like to like 50% of sight. And it was like really bad. And I thought I can never see again. And, it, and then the, the, the second doctor gave me the right treatment. So and it, it got better uh, to the point where uh, one eye is a little bit off. But um, Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I lost my eyesight uh, to like 50% and it was like really bad. What? And yeah, I, I, I thought I can never see again. So I was like, Oh my God, this is, this is super scary. I, I, um, I was sitting in a room and everything was dark and I had a TV on, I had put, turned the, turned the light of the TV of the LEDs down and I couldn't, I couldn't watch it. I couldn't open my eyes because it was hurting so bad. And uh, it was really terrible, and uh, I don't wish it on anybody to have this kind of feeling of maybe not seeing again, or, or yeah, basically oh it was goodness. not seeing again. So it's, it was pretty scary, and now it's better. So what's the state of it now, though? Like what's? Uh... It's it's better. I have some. I have uh, like a couple of scars that are left, um, but they don't they don't hinder my vision. It's like on on mm -hmm. the on the outside basically, so not on the pupil, and. Um, Yeah, but overall, um, if you treat it with like, with because uh, like, since I know I have this now, so every time when it feels itchy, I'll just go straight to the eye doctor and like tell, uh, and then uh, my eye doctor, she knows what I have. So she looks right away for that and treats me wow. and everything is going to be okay then. So, but it's, it's some scary stuff. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. 
Yeah, That's thank awful. You, thank you. Um, but yeah, so I could really relate to uh, to Riz Ahmed in in this in this film, like losing his um, hearing. So mm -hmm. scary stuff. I'm telling you. <laughs> Sorry, dude. You know what? Actually, the, the, you bring you bring that up. Um, uh, I, I recently um, it's been twice now that I've I've uh, had something called an ocular migraine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know what that is. I didn't know what it was until it happened. But I, I was I working on a that. project. Yeah, I was working on a project and then suddenly it was like right in line with my my pupils was like, have you ever seen a water drop on the lens of a camera mm -hmm. and how it kind of blurs and warps yeah. whatever is on you're looking through the camera lens or on, on, or on glasses? Yeah, um, it was like that, like two water drops right on my pupils. And I was like having trouble reading, like I was trying to read a line. And as I was, you know, you read left to right. Yeah. And it would blur out the lines as I was reading them. And I was like, what's going on? What's going on? And I was in my studio when it happened. And I ran out to my wife's office on the other end of the uh, other side of the house there. And yeah. uh, I was like, I can't see anything. My vision's going really blurry. I can't see. Oh There's God, something in my eye. That's scary. And I started freaking out because I'm literally in the middle of working on a project. And, um, and I'm like, what's, 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 you know? And uh, we called the eye doctor. And they said, uh, they described what was happening to me perfectly. Mm -hmm. And they said, how long has it been going on? I was like, five minutes, like five minutes. And they're like, if it doesn't go away in 15 minutes, then we'll uh, call us back and we'll arrange you going to emergency or something. Mm -hmm. it's like, But it sounds like an ocular migraine. Yeah. And like clockwork, it was gone. Crazy. And then I was, it was, it was um, followed by an extremely um, debilitating migraine where I had to lie on the couch, close my eyes, put a yeah. cold compress on my head and block out the light. And it, it took me out for like half the day. Crazy. Um, but they said that that's common. And so it actually happened again last week. And it was oh, worse. Okay. Did you? And so I had to go to the eye. I went to the eye doctor and they looked at everything. And they're like, everything looks okay. But we're going to do a couple other uh, field tests on your eyes. Is that, but either way, so, yeah. Is, is that basically, um, does it come from like too much strain on the eye? Or how does it, how does it happen? It, it could be a, a multitude of factors, but okay. I mean, for me, like these glasses that I wear when I work are, are what's called blue block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're meant to sort of, sort of save my eyes a little bit because if I work too late, I get these really twitchy sort of convulsing eyelids Yeah, I, and right. my eyes get really dry. So I, I got these and he said, no, those are great. Those are helping. He goes, it could be a, a, a whole bunch of things could be, you know, too much coffee, not enough coffee, like withdrawal, or it could be, mm -hmm. there's a multitude of factors. So it's kind of hard to, to pin down. So I'm just trying to do what i can to because it sucks yeah i bet um, and I, I i somewhat know to a degree that that fear uh, a little bit of just you know and it's that's off man so i really feel for you yeah health health is health is very important i mean i had like uh eileen steinbach sg posters i don't know if you know her um <laughs> she she had she had some back problems so she um actually went i think for surgery or something like that and uh yeah so that knocked her out for quite some time but yeah this is like for like sitting on a desk and working the whole day, you know, and like, and like yeah. doing those crazy hours, those client hours, you know? Yeah, man. So like 16 hour days. It's like being immobile is like the least healthy thing for you. Exactly. You know, yeah. exactly. But let's talk about something more happy and let's talk about your, yes. <laughs> your first tries in the movie poster or in, 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 in the art print world in general. Or uh, uh, before we start that, how did you, how did you end up a graphic designer, illustrator, um oh yeah well this yeah i kind of stay away from the band into this so essentially when i was in a band i uh didn't have a job i was on tour all the time yeah. right so i needed a way to make money um and when we started the band we didn't ha we couldn't afford to pay people to design our merch so i would design our merch mm -hmm. um i've always been into art and always drawn most of my life and really enjoyed um doing stuff in photoshop just for fun you know um, so I was like, I can do it. I can design a sort of merch. And so I started doing that. And then in where I live in Ontario, like the scene around here, there were no merch designers really. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of work doing that for local bands. And then when we started going on tour, I, I always did our merch forever. Like there were a yeah. few other artists we had that did merch here and there, but so I'd be on tour and then they'd be like, Oh, you did this. And I'm like, yeah, I do all our stuff. I'm like, do you want to do stuff for us? And it kind of snowballed from there. Mm -hmm. And then I, I was doing, you know, um, a lot bigger bands and, and bigger clients and stuff. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of how I got into graphic design was, you know, uh, I need, I needed to make money on tour. That's, oh, okay. you know, and it was something I could do on my laptop, right? This is back before I had a tablet or any of that. So, um, so 
how how did you learn then? I, I mean, back then there were not really YouTube tutorials that help you with everything. No. How, no, how did you kinda, learn that? Kind of by the seat of my pants. Like, I was just interested in it. Like, I even remember when my mom got us our first computer, okay. like a Windows. It was like 97 we got our first computer, but it was a Windows 93. Like, you know. Okay. <laughs> and it had like, we, there's no was internet. It, like, Was it 93? Wasn't it 95? 95 was it, right? The, the one before? Then was it 98? Maybe it was 95. After? It was, three, it was win, it, yeah, Windows 3.1, I think, then came 95, 98, 2000, and so Okay, like so it. we had 95 then. We had 95. Okay. Like, all that was on the computer was that Wizard Pinball game. Yeah, And, yeah, like, yeah. a couple CD-ROMs. Like, I think she, this computer, like, fell off the back of a truck or something. <laughs> and But it did have MS Paint, and everybody knows MS Paint. And when I discovered MS Paint, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I would just, <laughs> what I would do, I can remember, like, trying to draw album covers, which is funny, like, in MS Paint, like, with a little mouse, like, click, 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 click. Like, you still to... have any? What? Do you still have any pictures of that or images? Oh, God, no. No, I no, would no. love <laughs> to see that. <laughs> that would have been funny. That would have been funny to have, no. But, yeah, so I, even early on, I was just really into it. You know, mm -hmm. it was um, it was fun. So I think kind of carried that with me you know and i would just dabble in it you know yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i know the feeling i think i was i was like i i never had a console so i'm i'm not a, P a playstation guy or xbox guy or whatever me either or nintendo i always had a pc as well i think i got mine my first pc in 96 and i was like really EA, like an ea sports fan i had all the sports games like nhl nfl uh uh, FIFA and all the games, NBA, of course, and then I always played those. And I, I remember my first PC was a 166 megahertz uh, Intel <laughs> Pentium PC. I don't know. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, great times. <laughs> the first so computer I, we had that that had internet was an an e machine. Yeah, I don't know if you know what an e machine. It was just like the cheapest run of the mill economy computer you could buy. <laughs> Yeah, I never had any consoles either. I, I did actually, that's a lie. I did have consoles, but I didn't really play them. I got N64 when yeah. that came out, used, uh, and it came with Mario 64, and I just played Mario 64. Yeah. That was it. And then I got a PlayStation off a friend, used, and that came with Mortal Kombat Trilogy, mm -hmm. um, and no, Ultimate Mortal Kombat, I think it was called maybe, and a Metal Gear Solid sample game. Where you yeah, can only yeah, play yeah. the first level, and I played that Metal Gear Solid sample game like <laughs> a thousand times. But that was it. And then maybe some Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk was pretty good. Of but course, other than yeah. that, yeah, no, I have no video game. Uh, I'm not not good at experience. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Experience. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I, I totally get it. That's just, um, um, my dad, like, kind of, he forced me. He was, like, saying, yeah, you either want a console or you, you're going to get a PC. So make up your mind. And then he always, like, he always had a PC. So I, I know the PC gaming since uh, Commodore 64 and stuff like that. And Amiga, we had those at home. And, um, yeah, so I had to make up my mind. Do I want a PC or do I want a, a console? And then I, and he basically forced me on the pc which is a good thing though i i really enjoyed mm. it having one and it was a good choice not sticking <laughs> console <laughs> but also on the bad side uh this is why i do the it at our school now so i'm, I'm the it guy for our <laughs> school so this is what it pushed me in but uh yeah what was the what was the first try so you came up with posters um other than uh tour merch and stuff like that did you design yeah, posters gig posters as well then Oh yeah, yeah, but nothing, nothing necessarily noteworthy. Um, you know, a couple, yeah, tour posters. But um, it wasn't until um, I, I, I somehow came across James Ream Davis's poster for the Lost mm -hmm. Boys that he did for uh, Mondo, um, long like two two thousand and eight. I want to well, say two thousand and seven. Very early in the early days. So, yeah, a while back, and I came across it, and um, I had I just had to research where it was and what it was and because i fell in love with it and I, that's how i was sort of introduced to the world of of, of um alternative poster art and i was like i want to do that like i love film so much films on you know film and music and art are like literally it's my yeah. whole life um so i want to do posters and um you know i basically just started making stuff for myself mm -hmm. Kind of. And uh, I got in contact with someone um, and they commissioned me. We were talking about Bill and Ted and they were like, hey, well, you want to do a Bill and Ted poster and we can screen print it. And I was like, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, and I had just bought a tablet. So it was like my first tablet ever. It was a little um, Wacom bamboo, mm-hmm. but this big. And um, I'd never even used it before. And it's been a long time since I drew as well. Like I was doing a lot of my stuff, yeah. more graphic elements. So that was like kind of my first stab with a tablet. And uh, it's rough. Is, it's is very it the one, rough. And very is it the one you sent, the Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, the, the green and red one? Or is it something else? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm just going to show that people yep. here. Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> Man, I mean, it's a, it's a great first try. I, I, I think, it, you know, it's you know just... what? It reminds me a little bit of Stout. It doesn't have like the concept yet, I think. Yeah, clearly. But, but with yeah. the colors and like the muted tones and like the, the, the multiple characters in there. Yeah, I can see it 100%. And I think too, because especially in that era, like coming up, um, Stout was, you know, still is king. You know what I mean? His, his work is incredible. So a lot of people kind of riffed on, on his style because it was so kind of influential mm-hmm. in the scene. Um, and I think I even did that. I did that poster before I, I met, you know, um, Justin and Paige from Phantom mm-hmm. City or Gary or Jason. That was like before, you know, yeah. I got in, into that side of things. I got to know people more. You know, this was just me like dabbling, wanting to try this out the first time. Yeah. And it's pretty funny how it's come full circle with that film as well. That's great. Yeah, man. I mean, you, I mean, it's, a, it's your favorite movie. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Fair enough. Yeah, when I die, my to- my tombstone will literally say "liked Bill and Ted and the Smashing Pumpkins." That's <laughs> all I'm going to be known for. I swear. That's great. That's great. Drew some pictures sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe 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 you can do that now. Design uh, a Bill and Ted tombstone for you. <laughs> coffin. Or, it's a phone booth. Oh, there you go. There you go. See, you do that. Design that. <laughs> so you're you're definitely uh, safe. <laughs> yeah, I'll be buried vertically. <laughs> Perfect. <this. laughs> Um, so, um, since I do also a lot of movie reviews on, uh, on my podcast here, mostly in German though, but, uh, I was wondering what mm-hmm. is a, uh, what's the last movie that you've seen? Um, last movie I saw that I really enjoyed was, um, Nobody. Okay. With, um, that was oh great. God, what's the actor's uh, yeah, name yeah, again? Uh, Bob Odenkirk. Yes, Bob Odenkirk. Thank you. Yeah, no, I loved it. I love nobody. So good, when I, right? Remember when I saw the trailer? I, right? Yeah, like really, it? I loved it. I had such a good time. It was so highly entertaining. I yeah. mean, this story is, um, let's not talk about a story, but I think it was just pure fun and I had just had a great night watching it. Yeah. When I saw the trailer for that movie, mm-hmm. it delivered exactly what I thought it would be. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. And that's what I wanted. You know, it reminds me of like, my dad would love that movie. Yeah. And I haven't really been able to spend much time with my dad because of, yeah. you know, obvious reasons of everything going on. Um, and so watching that, like, I, yeah, it made me think of my dad. Like, we used to watch those kind of movies like Con Air yeah. and The Rock. And like, all you know, it's just it's right up his alley. I remember when I showed him John Wick, his mind, like, exploded. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, I told him, like, listen, when, when things are good, you and me are going to get together and we're going to have a couple beers and watch Nobody because he'll yeah. love it. Yeah, I, I thought it was great. Bob Odenkirk's fantastic. Yeah, it was a perfect fit. I, I really, really had a good time with this movie as well. Um, is, but is that the last one you actually saw or as the last one you actually liked? Um, I think that's the last movie I actually saw. I've been watching a lot of TV shows. What are you watching? Um, uh, right now, I'm, I'm re-watching The Boys because mm-hmm. um, we're coming up on uh, season three. Indeed. And my sister is actually uh, um, head of makeup... Oh, on that okay, show. that's nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's filming in Toronto. That's where, where that's where they film it. So she's there working mm-hmm. on it. Um, and uh, so I love that show. I love the comic. I love the comic beforehand. See, I I need to get um, your sister on then, have because I because I always do like this like basically the people behind the movie and TV shows like like what their jobs are. So it's not only the actors that are uh, in in the forefront, but maybe we need to do the hookups since I do talking to the head writer of Cobra Kai soon on Friday. And uh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, why not, man? Perfect, yeah. Yeah, she's she's so talented, man. She uh she does great work on that show. Uh, I'm really proud of her yeah, for that. I mean, there's so much um, stuff to do, like in terms of makeup. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that show, and um, I'm trying to think of but, what else. By did the I way, watch the, I, I, there's so much. Yeah. By the um, way, does it mean you have uh, you always have an awesome Halloween costume? <laughs> I, you know, I've never, I've never utilized her for for my Halloween okay. costumes, but 
Um, I did get her like a, a, a horrible pain gig <laughs> with my whole group of friends. They all wanted to get have their makeup done really cool for Halloween. And she went over and did that. But she's so she's so sweet. And she she just wanted to do it. because She loves doing yeah. it, you know, so. So she did up a couple of my friends as like characters from Beetlejuice awesome. and it looked pretty great. She did a fantastic job. Yeah, that sounds yeah. awesome. But I haven't. Yeah, I haven't utilized it yet, though. But what would one you day, do one day? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. OK, I don't know. I literally can't think off the top of my head. Fair enough. I would maybe like I don't know. I've always dressed as Kiefer Sutherland from Lost Boys for Halloween <laughs> a few times, quite a few times. But I've never done like the appliance. Like the brow, yeah. the brow plants the contacts. Maybe I get her to do something like that. There you go. Know. Very, very subtle. <laughs> very subtle. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, and what what are some must, uh, must-see movies or TV shows that you really look forward to? Um, I'm really looking forward to, uh, one I told you about is the new Candyman yeah. movie. Really looking forward to that. I was, I was really disheartened when it got postponed for as long as it has been so that's one that's definitely on my radar you, you did some um, Candyman art right Bef uh, before yeah for the original yeah. film yeah for the um that was supposed to be a part of um horror hound weekend in cincinnati yeah. that you know was canceled due to covid um so that was going to be a limited edition poster um i don't know what's happening with it if if i'm gonna get my hands on any copies or if we're gonna wait mm. until things open back up and start um gathering again at conventions yeah. um but uh yeah so that that's what that was all right for. cool 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 but uh mm -hmm. oh invincible invincible is also oh an incredible yeah, yeah. Show. that's I yeah totally I, I watched the whole uh, the whole season uh and i recommended it already on on the blog so it's like that's that's a great show yeah it's it's so funny i was talking to my friends about it and they're like you know have you seen this or whatever and i was like I feel like I'm predicting all these shows because if you look at one of my, my bottom shelf on my shelf yeah. here in my studio, like I have like my four favorite comics yeah. and, and all these comics I owned before there were shows. The first one is Walking Dead, The Boys, Preacher, and Invincible <laughs> are the four comics, all, every single one that lines the bottom of my shelf. The four comics of and the so, apocalypse. Yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah, that's, no, it's great. That's some great stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, man. The Invincible was awesome. I really, really had a good time with it. Um, yeah, they captured the, the, the spirit of it really did well. You, did you like it as much as the comics, or would you say it's a little bit, they could have done this a little bit better? What, what's your thought on that? You know, I have like uh, three or four of the compendiums, and it's been so long since I've read them that I couldn't even remember what was still like... Uh, completely like note for note panel for panel comic versus show but i just remember thinking the show was fantastic mm -hmm. uh there was like i just i felt like i was reading the comic like, that's what i meant by it captured the spirit as far as some of the details of the plot i can't remember mm -hmm. it's been that long but um but they nailed what i remembered of it like i felt like i was reading the comic but it was coming to life yeah. so that's the that's the cool thing okay um now I want to talk about your favorite movie. I mean, we mentioned it is, uh, first of all, which part is it of the trilogy? Or would you say the trilogy in general? Oh, yeah. Bill and Ted? Oh, Bogus Journey is the sequel. So it's the second one. Second film in, in the three. Okay. Um, that's uh, that's uh, good to know. And um, would you say um, the, 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 the one sheet that you put in is, 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 uh, is, is a good poster or would you have done it totally differently if you would do it? Uh, uh, or, I mean, you've done it again, right? You have, you've done all three right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I did the first two films twice yeah, actually. Yeah. And then, uh, just recently with Mondo, we did the third film to kind of, um, bookend the series of the posters I did. Okay. With Mondo. Let me rephrase that question. Would you love to do, or would you have loved to do the key art? Um, you know, no, probably not because with key art, there's so many limitations okay. in, in terms of how things have to be shown and how actors have to be portrayed. And, and, um, it can, it can really, um, I mean, not always, but when you're dealing with like, like a, a film like this, where it's a big cast and it's very, um, you know, the, the characters are, are, uh, very first and foremost, obviously, but it, it doesn't leave a lot of wiggle room for, for creativeness. It's kind of like, okay, here are your main characters. They have to be this size. They have to be this, you know, this shade and 
they got to look this way. It's very, very particular. Mm-hmm. So it's not, it's not as, you know, creatively fulfilling as doing alternative posters. You know? Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, there's one question from the audience on Bill and Tad, the trilogy. Um, Kevin Lalosky wanted to know, what is uh, your most memorable moment of the whole trilogy? Um, I would have to say it's honestly the very end sequence of Bogus Journey was my favorite. It's when they're, they, um, you know, spoilers, even though it's a 30 year old <laughs> movie, but, uh, they essentially, you know, beat the bad guy and, and they have to perform for the entire world yeah. and they play what is considered at that time, even though it's kind of been, it's not really canon now, um, to, to play the, the song that, you know, unites the yeah. world and they do this song and they had steve vai famous guitar player steve vai provide all the guitar dubbing mm-hmm. and the song that he wrote kind of blends into kisses uh, god gave rock and roll to you and but that moment i remember i was so young watching that scene and uh i got you know i i was so overcome with emotion the way the music sounded and the scene and how epic it was to me and um it that was the moment where i went that's what i want to do that i want to play music that okay. was um so it was a very influential moment in That's my awesome. life. You know, it's like I want to this this watching this made me feel so great that I want to do this. You know, that was so yeah, big moment from a Bill and Ted movie because it kind of if it wasn't for music, I wouldn't be doing art. I would it started everything, Perfect, right? Yeah. So okay, this, basically this 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 scene describes you. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Um, and Kevin also wanted to know what are your thoughts on uh, face to music. Loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. It's it's hard, you know. Um, you'll always say, you, again, I'm wait, waiting 30 years for this film to come out. So at, at one point, uh, sorry, at what point do you, you know, s- stop worrying so much and being over analytical mm-hmm. and just enjoying something that you should be happy even exists in the yeah. first place, yeah. do you know? And I was kind of prepared to go in. I had expectations, then I had none. Then I had them, then I had none. And I just went in and was just like, I'm going to see my two favorite people on screen again. And that's all I give two fucks about. Yeah. And I did. And um, I was actually sent to screener because I had to work on the project. Yeah. And so I got it a few days early. And I think I received the screener at one in the morning. <laughs> and I was like, OK, do I go to sleep and watch this, you know, with fresh eyes tomorrow? Or do I watch it now? And I said, no, watching it now. So I made a cup of coffee, set my office, my headphones on, turned the lights <laughs> off and, and watched the film. And I, I literally legitimately got emotional at the end. Yeah. Like, again, this, this it had a very similar ending mm-hmm. sequence that it just True. conjures up a lot of emotion. And then being a dad now and seeing the relationship between them and their daughters and, and that moment where they realize their daughters are, you know, again, oh, I'm not going to say anything. Sorry, spoiler. Mm-hmm. But there's a moment there where it just hit me pretty hard in the feels. And I was like, they did it again. You know, yeah, they did it, was, it again, I, and so it's just a, such a happy. Yeah, film. I had I had also a really great time with that movie, so it was a really really good time. I don't have the same connection as you do, obviously, but um, still the movie holds mm-hmm. up, and I think it's a very strong movie um, that has very good values and uh, emotion. Absolutely. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, coming back to posters a little bit. Um, I was wondering, what are your favorite posters as of right now? Could be anything from alternative movie posters to uh, key art posters to anything you want to point out that is really, you know, stuck in your mind. Well, I've I've recently acquired a couple mm-hmm. posters that that have been my most favorite lately. One of them's actually behind did, did me. Did you trade? You can see did it right you there. trade? Yes, <laughs> yes, we traded. What what? What did um, what did yeah, Muro? That's a Clockwork Orange by. Uh, what did Gaia. Muro get? What did mm-hmm. Muro get? He got um, Blue Velvet. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's great. He wanted Blue Velvet and um, Black Swan. Awesome. So we did we did that that swap. Awesome. And I got the variant as well because it's beautiful. But uh, he's the best. I've been talking to him like every yeah, he's day. He's a good. He's a very good he's dude. He's the biggest sweetheart yeah. on the planet. Yeah, he's so talented. I lo- yeah, love he's his been work. multiple times on so, the yeah, podcast that's as well. So yeah. Yeah, I've watched. Yeah, great. yeah, 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 yeah. He's so sweet. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to when we can all start traveling again. Hopefully, you know, get a Mondocon going and get him down. Yeah. You know, from, from overseas and uh, yeah. and hang out. And if stuff it's like possible, that. I, I'll come down. But yeah, so I got. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's 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 so much. Um, there's such a big void filled in, in human connection. And yeah. I think a lot of people need to be seen in the flesh and and you know be in the presence of people yeah. again. I think it's very important. Um, 
but yeah, so that one is definitely um, I, I love to death. Another one is a good friend of mine, Richie mm-hmm. Beckett, uh, also one of my favorite artists. I've known him for a long, long, mm-hmm. long time. What? And uh, he released. A- what did he do? I I I I I think I saw this, but I I don't know the artist personally. So. Yeah, so the the, the poster that's my favorite of, of his recently because I love yeah. all his work is uh, he did. Um, for Revolver magazine, they did a feature on the Deftones mm-hmm. um, in celebrating, I think, 20 years of White Pony, okay. the album White Pony, which is, happens to be like my third favorite album okay. of all time. Um, and then he did art be, for that release, mm-hmm. um, for that anniversary, and he released prints as well as a blanket, uh, like a tapestry of it, which I also have. So, yeah, and so it's, I think it's just titled White Pony, the piece, but I absolutely loved it. And uh, I hit him up about that and I managed to get my hands on a, on a, a gicle as well as a, a tapestry blanket of that artwork. It's That's beautiful. Nice. Um, and, you know, I, w- another one too uh, that I love, which is, it's funny, you know, I have three Clockwork Orange posters <laughs> in my house. I have let, this let one, me, I have guess. Rory Kurtz's variant. Uh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. And then, we um yeah. wbyk's okay okay yeah uh recent one I was, that they did and that's hanging up in my okay i was yeah i was right guessing now. that because yeah that's that's an awesome poster yeah. yeah so those those three are uh like and there's a couple other ones that i've got it's hard to remember you know there's so much incredible art that's coming out now it's hard to keep tabs on everything but yeah right now those 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 are some of my favorites for um sure. would you love to do a uh, clockwork orange print Probably not. It's funny, you know, because um, like I'm not even a huge fan of the film. Okay. Like it's it's, it's yeah, I respect it for what it is, and it, it's got its iconic yeah. moments, and it's it's you know it's in the pantheon of, of fantastic films, but it just but it does inspire incredible art. Like there's no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. Like every Clockwork Orange poster I've ever seen, I've loved. Yeah. You know, um, loved more than the movie. You know, to mm-hmm. a degree. Clearly, I have three of them. You know, so. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. Maybe if there's a uh, if there's an idea that comes, you know. But there's been such great art yeah, and, and like unique conceptual art and that it's tough. I don't think I need to put my yeah, and, you know my yeah, and it's, it's tough if you don't like the movie or you're not into the project, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I like the film. Okay, okay. I just don't, I don't, I don't like it as someone. Oh, okay. Who has who has three posters in their house of it? Oh, okay, got it, got it, got <laughs> so, it. No, the film's fantastic. It's a classic. It's just not, yeah. You know, I don't have any Bill and Ted posters in here. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I, I see. I, I see how it is. The art that I, I, I love the most of those, um, like uh, the Did Clockwork Orange films just inspire great art. Speaking of Bill and Ted posters, <laughs> would you say there are any artists or like who have done Bill and Ted that did a good job that you actually liked? Oh, yeah. Sonny and Biddy. Okay, there you go. WBYK, yeah. They're, uh, you know, it's actually it was nice. It was refreshing to see those because I've I've done so much Bill and Ted artwork that it's not I've, I'm far from over it, but it's just like I would love. I don't really hang my own mm-hmm. art in, you know, and I I want to. It was so nice to see someone else's take on it and be like, oh yeah, now I can have something that I can put up. Do you know what I mean? And they just killed it, yeah. killed it, killed it. So good. Perfect. Um. You've worked with different galleries before. Um, how how was the experience, and how is it working with galleries? Or would you rather do private commissions or just your own stuff, like privately? Sorry, say it again. Um, you you've worked with different galleries before, and uh, I think it was you work with Bottleneck, you work with Mondo. Uh, who else am I missing here? Hero Complex. Hero Complex, okay. And uh, yeah, how was the experience working with galleries or would you rather do private commissions and uh, work with work, work this way? Um, no, all my experiences with galleries have been fantastic. I have zero complaints. And if it wasn't for galleries, I wouldn't have a career because that's kind of where I got my jump off. You know, it was, um, we, we talked earlier about, I mentioned James Ream Davis's Lost Boys. And it's weird because James and I eventually through some serendipitousness that we became like really, really close friends. And it was through him that I met Adam and everyone over at hero complex gallery. And they gave me a shot, put me in a couple of gallery shows. And if it wasn't for them, then I wouldn't have been, you know, it just, again, snowball effect. Yeah. So I owe a lot of my career to, 
to to Hero Complex and 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 Bottleneck, who took me on really early. You know, um, when I was still figuring out what the hell I was mm. doing. Okay, that's cool. But um, I, I would take those. I mean, I don't think you can really choose between them or Private Commission. I I don't really see the comparison there. Because like some but, artists, uh, some artists just do private commissions. I mean, that that's that's where I'm coming from. For example, like uh, Christoph Domor. Oh, you mean like originals, like original as pieces? well, like Christoph Domorodsky, uh, the uh, uh, the brother of Gaps. I mean, he's yep. he's doing mostly private commissions and uh, original pieces, or Greg Ruth doing a lot of original pieces. Yeah. You know, um, well, in terms of original pieces, no, I love doing original pieces, but uh, I think it's kind of uh, separate from 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 what I would submit for for a gallery. I've done originals for galleries as well, obviously, but um, yeah, I thought you were t speaking in terms of also also yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, both both actually so. Hmm. Well, I, I, yeah, I love doing private commission um, um, originals, but it's more or less like I'll kind of do them and then. Um, you know, make them available rather than take on a commission okay. and, you know, draw what somebody else asks. Um, but, um, yeah, in regards of private commission posters, like I would just rather do it licensed. If I can do it licensed, I'd rather do it okay, licensed. Um, just to sort of have that sign and seal thing. But that, I, that's in no way, um, me having an opinion or negative feelings at all towards anybody who does private commissions. I think it's, it, it's you're just creating art. All art yeah. is fantastic. All art is great. More art in the world is yeah, amazing. Yeah, I mean, in the end, um, it shouldn't. Just for me personally, that's a personal choice. Yeah, and, it, and in the end, it shouldn't like like only because people want to like make money off their IP, which is the financial aspect. And I mean, it does make the, the mm -hmm. art bad in that case. So, totally fair. Yeah, I mean, I I also got my footing in doing private commissions. Like before, I ever got a licensed mm -hmm. job, I, I probably did close to a dozen private commissions, but that was the only means. That was the only platform. So. Uh, I got some really great early advice early on from Justin Erickson, a fan yeah. of City, where I said, you know, when I first met him, like, what do I do? You know, and he said, just keep making art. Just make it. Just keep doing it. Keep making posters. You have a great idea. Make it. Just keep making art. Find a way for a lot of people to see your art. Mm -hmm. And again, this we're talking quite a few years ago. And again, the social media boom of, of art promotion, it was just different. It wasn't like it mm -hmm. is now. So I would do a lot of conventions and, and uh, things to promote myself but just yeah. creating art that that was that was the thing so anyway you know so i, I again i i i owe uh, a lot to doing those early private commissions as well to helping out my yeah. career so i would never never speak ill of them yeah. at all um a question from uh ruslan psoynok who is i think he's uh, i forgot the gallery name the gallery's name um some he's in japan i think but he's he's doing also some cool work and uh, he was asking uh, will there be more originals coming this year? Oh, I'm sure when I have the when I have the time to do them. Um, I'm just a lot of the projects that I'm working on right now are, are very long, long-winded mm -hmm. projects. Like for example, Cobra Kai is a very large mm -hmm. project, so a lot of moving parts. So I mean, anytime I have downtime to draw, I'm, I'm trying to spend with my kids and my family because mm -hmm. um, you know I'm in here for 14 hours a day, some days maybe 16 hours yeah. a day. Uh, so it's yeah, it's rare that I get that moment to sit down and be like, you know what, I have an idea for this and I just want to draw. Yeah. Which is sad. I really wish that I had more time to to do stuff, personal stuff, but um if to me that's almost like a luxury at this point that I that I can't uh the, that I don't have the time to do. But when I but I'm always trying to mm -hmm. though. I'm trying to fit in um originals. Fair enough. Um you also collect uh not your own art, but you collect um like what would you say is in your collection other than the two pieces we've seen is how, how, how big is the collection? It's two flat files worth. Okay. That like, like ballpark it. How, how many are we talking? Um, how many can you fit in a drawer or maybe, well, I have them all sealed in bags and everything. My collection's all okay. pretty pristinely kept. So let's say, let's say I 300? fit close to 30, 35, Per drawer, maybe so ten drawers. Yeah, three hundred, three hundred fifty. Some, yeah, probably around there. Yeah, that's oh, a that's a decent yeah, all, all different decent things. collection. What would we say is your uh, your Grail piece? My Grail piece is my Lost Boys, my James okay, Dean Davis okay. Lost Boys that I that I it was the first expensive piece I ever bought. I, I bought it off eBay a hundred years ago before I knew James, 
and I don't even remember how much it cost, some ridiculous amount of money. <laughs> and uh, so that is my grail. I, I had it hung up in my office for years. Um, but it was like this is it's a bizarre size and it wasn't really fitting in the frame. It would always fall down in the frame. So I was like, you know what? It's had its day up on the wall. I'm just going to put it away for safekeeping mm-hmm. for a little while. Okay. Um, so that that that's definitely in there for sure. Um, that's probably my holy grail because that's the one that, that started it off. Okay, fair enough. Um, and mm-hmm. yeah, speaking of the collection, what was the last piece that you put up um, at your house? Last piece yeah. that I hung? Um, was the We Buy Your Kids uh, Clockwork Orange. Put it, it's up in my foyer. Um, what else did you hang up? Because you sent me multiple uh, multiple pieces that you... Is, is that yeah, you did you change it, around, change it out or what, what's the deal? Because, you know, I changed my wall. So Yeah, well, changing... Yeah, I, um, I've changed around some posters in my studio, a bit, but the house ones are pretty permanent at the moment. So, yeah, I sent you that. I have We Buy Your Kids, two We Buy Your Kids pieces in yeah. uh, the house. Um, there's the clockwork orange and then, um, their birds uh, okay. I have that one as well in the living room. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm checking. I'm going through the images so I can show the people. Uh, where is it? Where above are... the circle chair there, the cozy chair. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Yeah. I'll... So pulling yeah, it up. So we got that one there. I have, Beautiful um, people. Gabs's true romance, which I absolutely love. That's kind of a grail for me, to be honest. I, I love that poster. Um, that's up in, uh, the hallway, the front entrance hallway. Oh, there it with is. It's a little wooden yeah, table it, there. Yeah, that's a, by, by the way, great, great style, great decor in the house. Really liking it. Thank you. Looking very good Thank with you. the, Thank with you. the black, with the black frames of the, uh, of like the windows and stuff like that. I like this kind of industrial yeah. style. looks really good. Thanks, man. Yeah. We're, uh, that's a big ups, ups to my wife. She, um, she's got a great eye for that stuff. Perfect. Yeah. Give, um, give her a shout. Yeah. Out. I didn't go, I don't go too crazy with my <laughs> love you, baby. Um, <laughs> no, I don't go too crazy with the frames. Um, mm-hmm. just like me neither. Very minimalist. Let, let, I like to let the art, the art really. Yeah. Especially if you have you know, this kind of like this kind of decor, if you have multiple pieces in there, you can't yeah. go crazy with the yeah. frames. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I also got a Chuck Sperry piece there. David Lynch. David Lynch in the house. Yeah. Found that right away. Yeah. I have, um, um, what else is there? Oh yeah, John Baisley in the living room is Bar- from Baroness. One of his um, illustrations. It's that sort of peachy colored one you see on the wall above yep, the couch. That looks really cool. Yeah, I, I picked that up at the last that one. Con Yeah, from um, yeah, it's beautiful. From uh, Burlesque, picked that up from Bur- Burlesque, and uh, also got another one from Burlesque there by uh, Jacob Bannon piece. Mm-hmm. It's the gold one. Yeah, gold square piece, and then. The one that my wife always wants me to, to take down is the one that's in the front hall bathroom, like our powder room. Yeah, that's that's one of the format I can't I can't show to people, but it's <laughs> Halloween and it looks really great. I I've seen it, so uh, it's it's really yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who who did this again? I remember seeing this, but who did this? Um, I'm gonna feel bad if if I um, mispronounce their name. Uh, Jai Jaiwoon Pak, I believe. Oh, okay. Could be. It was. I'm gonna feel it was also really bad what, if I mispronounced the name. What was also uh, Mondo release, right? Yes. I'll 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 tag him and then he. Yes, I think, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, uh, Jai Woon Pak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. And uh, yeah, you you have a lot of stuff in your office as well. So uh, let let let's look at these. Um, I just pulled up the the side with your desk uh, uh, where you actually do some some. Uh, some some analog drawing i think or uh do you use your wacom over there as well sorry which one uh, are you where, the, at where the texas chainsaw massacre is like like the jason edmiston oh yeah 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 that's kind of yeah that's my, the edmiston yeah. poster up there yeah that's where, where i work on my originals ah, okay okay so just a little drawing drawing looks, table. by the way it looks very clean or is that is that is it always that clean or is, did you no, it's always I'm I'm a, yeah I'm a nut I'm a nut about it. It's always that clean. Perfect. I try to keep it always that clean. Perfect. Yeah. Again, it's like this is this is the space that I'm in all hours of the day, so I have yeah. to be. You used the term earlier, like zen, you know, and I need things to be neat and orderly so that I can focus on the chaos up here and on on I, what I'm. I totally get on, it. Know? I wish I could keep it this way, but there. I mean, I have three monitors here. There's so many cables from the cameras, the lights, and like all the 
oh, all the like arms imagine. for the microphones and stuff like that. And then, uh, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. But I'm, I'm moving soon <laughs> to a bigger apartment. Up, it's basically just the fourth floor here. So um, I will I will rearrange everything. And it's bigger? Yeah, it's it got another room. So I got, I got an actual office because so, this right here right now is just my living room. And I have like one part of it is an office. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to having like like a, just a de- whole room dedicated to an office. So and uh, yeah, this uh, this is where we're going to do a better cable management and like try to set up everything um, for good. So I don't have to change it around. But, uh, you know, like all like yeah. all the little things like the lights and stuff like that, they got more and more throughout the time. So like this, that's kind of cluttery. Oh, yeah. yeah but. I had to buy one of those. I got like off Amazon, one of those little it's like a black wire hook basket thing is underneath my desk because yeah, yeah. i have like six cables running out of my tablet and my computer mm. and my hard drives and all this and it's all neatly tied up under so if you look under my desk it's just clean you don't see oh, anything that's perfect man i wish i could do that but yeah uh, yeah i by changing it <laughs> so much it's like i, I but I'm, I'm doing it better i, I proof uh, i probably prove it i'll take <laughs> pictures <laughs> when it's all set up <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's, uh, there's some more stuff. Um, there's your working desk with the Wacom and everything. You got, uh, the beautiful, uh, yep. Ollie Ma's Die Hard, I see. Man, yes. I'm, I'm so mad that I thought it's going to be there because it was in Ben Bo's, um, shop at, uh, Uni- uh, Uniquely Geekly. He still had it up for such mm-hmm. a long time, an AP for that, for, I think for 125 pounds. Wow. And for such a long time, and I still didn't pull the trigger, and I'm really mad about it, but what you going to do? Yeah, that one's been that one's been up in my office probably the longest out of all of yeah, them. Yeah, that's a great one. I can't bring myself to take it down or swap it out yet, just yet. Yeah, I tried to get it in a regular release, but I still struck out. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, and then we also have the vinyls, of course, and then, uh, yeah, the door out of the office that we've that we see behind you. Yes. Is that, I mean, is it, do you have like a, like a multiple story house or um, is it just all? Yeah, I'm actually, my studio is on the main floor. Okay. So I'm just outside this door right here, the black mm-hmm. door. That's uh, the kitchen. Ah, okay. The kitchen's right there. And then this, this door goes out into the backyard. Mm-hmm. And then we have another door in the kitchen that goes into the backyard. So there's two backyard yeah, okay. I, I think I can see that. So now. it's kind of nice in the summer when I'm trapped in here, I can just open the back door and kind of like a partially outside. Yeah. <laughs> so it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. And we just, we've been renovating our house like crazy. So all these floors mm-hmm. and trim, all this is brand new that we put in here. So awesome. That's, that's really great. Um, so you plan on living there for a long time. I take it. I hope so. I have moved around so much in my life. I, I'm happy never moving again. <laughs> You know, moved a lot in my childhood. So, I bet. You know, I hope it's I hope it's a while yet, but who knows? Well, did, who knows? did you move because like I don't know because like I know the people that moved a lot were mostly in the army, or did you just move around like in in the same area? Oh, growing up, I mean, there's a multitude of reasons. Mm-hmm. Like, um, my dad was in a um, uh, had his own flooring business. He was trying to get off okay. the ground, and we we're and my family's originally from Newfoundland, which is mm-hmm. a little island off off the yeah. coast of Canada, and. Uh, so there's a lot of moving, and that's where all my family is, like all my extended family. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of moving back and forth, trying to land work and land a place, and just moved okay. around a lot. And then my parents split when I was young, so they moved around a lot. So I'm just used to it, like constantly moving around. But but at the same time, now I have yeah. kids, and we have a beautiful home in a really nice neighborhood, and I just want to just put my feet down for a second and not, not be moving Pre- anymore. But prepared you, know? you for the tool life, I take it. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, we we lived in um in Hamilton uh, before, which is the uh, same city that a couple of other artists you yeah. know live. Um, but when we had kids, uh, we just wanted to get out of the mm-hmm. city, so we're a little bit more um, a little bit more rural now. But is it further away? Um, smaller I, town. I, I I know I talked to Sarah Deck, uh, like because she like also lives very rural. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I think I'm. I think I'm closer to Sarah oh, okay. now. Sarah before was forty was forty minutes away from me. I think I'm a little bit closer okay. now, um, but I'm farther from from Gary. Me and Gary literally, I could walk to his house in oh, five okay. minutes. So we were really close. That's um, like basically a tech but, uh, Peter and uh, I think it's Brian Reading. I think that's his name. Like the they're both Linux cut artists and like they live like down the street basically from each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny, and it's funny how all all the Canadian crew are yeah. all like we're all the best friends. Like, 
Justin and Paige live in Toronto, but um, I don't know if they're going to stay there for mm. always. But then Jason Edmiston lives in Toronto mm. as well. So we're all like, we're all within an hour of each other. That's true, yeah. And, you know, but, pre, pre-pandemic, we'd hang but out But since you're not time. playing, you're, you're not in the, uh, what is it, Destiny 2 uh, gaming group that Sarah and a couple other artists well, has? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't know anything. <laughs> I know that there's that, yeah, that video game group yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> no, 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 not part of that All one. All right. Um, maybe if they, maybe if they play Tony Hawk, I'll be there. <laughs> Tony Hawk, yeah, the, the the multiplayer version of Tony Hawk. <laughs> it's just skating, basically yeah. an open world skate park. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We could just do that outside. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Um, so, um, since we've seen your desk, is there anything, uh, that you're working on right now that you can actually talk about? I know it's really tough NDAs and all, but is there something you can tease maybe? Hmm. I don't think so. I hate to be the bringer of bad news, but I don't think so. Nope. All right. No, nope. I'm looking through my work, my work list right now. Literally signed an NDA for almost every single one of them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, I know, I know how that is, but I, don't don't blame me for yeah. trying. <laughs> no, no, no. I hear you. No, I wish I could give you a little a little bit more insight. I mean, it, it's it's a bit of a bummer keeping everything so hush hush all the yeah, time. Yeah, it's you know? tough. It's tough. Um, but then let's talk about uh, your general process on things. How's how's your uh, general approach to a project to an idea? Um, how do you go about it? Um, you know, for me, it, it, it very much has to come from, um, like, like a spark's got to go off. Do you know what I mean? So like if, if I, if I see a project or I'm pitched a project, I mean, um, and I'm not immediately like, oh, oh, this is like my, my brain's mm-hmm. kind of firing off ideas right from the get go. Then I tend to kind of steer away from them to be quite honest, because, um, I'm a firm believer that if I'm not passionate about what I'm working on, that it will show mm-hmm. in the art and that does favors for nobody, yeah. not for me and not for the client either. Right. So, um, I've always just found it for me again, just personal preference to kind of, um, practice that approach for, for most of the things that mm-hmm. I do. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, and it, it's, it's fun because, or it's sorry, not fun. It's um, it can apply to new things I haven't seen either. So it doesn't always have to be nostalgia. It doesn't always have to be something that I uh, hold near and dear and five top five desert album films or something. Um, like I recently watched a, a new indie film the other day and uh, which one it is great. And I was like, Boop. I can't oh, okay, say what okay. it is. Oh, okay. You haven't released the name yet. I don't even know if the name name's oh, final. Okay. Interesting. Um, but uh. But I was like, boom, idea, 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 idea. It just it inspired me. And so I like to kind of take the in- inspiration is, route very strongly. Is there the also beginning. like at some point you would say no to a project or is that like how often did that happen? I have. I have a, a handful of times. Um, I mean, I'm not I'm not difficult to work with. I'm not trying to say it like that, but I, I'm very clear with a lot of my clients. Like I'm like, I want to I want to create awesome, cool, beautiful mm-hmm. art that you love and that I love. And I don't want to um, phone in anything for anybody. Yeah. Um, I don't always have being, <laughs> it's, funny, it's, that, it's, that, it's that like band DIY integrity is everything mentality that I, I'm stuck mm-hmm. with. But then at the same time, I'm also a family man and, and I have two children. And so there are certain circumstances obviously where I have to do what's best as well, Yeah, you know, for, um, for life. But at the same time, um, I think I think it's very important to do things that that you really love if you can because it it'll go farther in the long mm-hmm. run, um, just in terms of how much you how much passion you put into something. Yeah, you know what I mean, of course. I, I mean, I mean, there there are probably like I don't know projects that, for example, that's that's like basically like me saying no to a print because I maybe don't like the movie or. I mean, I love the art, but I don't like the movie. It's like hard to say yes to something then, you know? Yeah. So. And I've, I've bought and plenty of, uh, purchased plenty of posters or loved plenty of posters that I didn't like the film or I didn't know the film based yeah. solely on art. Um, you know, there's also that, that angle too. Um, but I, 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 I kind of look at it as like, imagine if you're um, a jazz artist, a jazz musician, right? And um, 
someone asked you to write a hair metal song. Hmm. And you go, well, I probably can. It's probably not going to be the best hair metal song, but I don't really want to because I don't really like yeah. it. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean? Sure. It's just like, um, it, I guess it's that kind, of, that kind of feeling. Like, I bet you there's someone out there that really wants to write an 80s hair metal song that'll do it, it better. It, is there a project you know? where you can, like, or, I don't know if you're allowed to talk or if you want to, want to say it because of clients and stuff like that, but is there like a project you said no to because you didn't didn't feel the movie or whatever? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's been a couple. Um, um, I'm trying to think of, of an example. Um, I won't go into too much detail about it, but I'll just say that there was a rather large property that I, uh, IP that I got the chance to work on. And, um, I said, I, I actually rattled my brain about it for a long time mm -hmm. because, um, it was very, it would have been very smart for me to take this this gig financially, but I just was really having trouble coming to terms with, with working on it because I just didn't care yeah. for it. Um, and I didn't want to half-ass it. I didn't want it to be bad. So I mean, that's a good thing um, in the end. I mean, you know, I, I would think so. Right. And also the but, fans um, and collectors so, who uh, get the print in the end. I mean, exactly. It's like, you know, you have, you have to like make sure things are just a certain way as well. You don't want to, you know, so, I said no to the project, um, very like, you know, hesitantly, obviously, but I said no, just cause I had to go with my gut mm -hmm. on it. And, um, and I thought it was going to be like the end of that job. Mm -hmm. Like it was going to be like, you know, like I, I'm saying, no, I might be hurting myself yeah. here. And it actually worked out in the long run because that they were like, okay, well, if this is not what you want to do, then there's this. Mm -hmm. And I went, I love that second. Yeah. Thing. Like, I love, love, love that second thing. And they're like, well, great. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Right. And then that first thing that I said no to eventually went to another artist mm -hmm. who loves that. Thing. Ah, yeah, there you go. That's good. So you see what yeah, I mean? Totally. It's like that. And that for me almost feels like, I don't want to say karma, but it's like, that's good. It's like good energy. It's like, okay, yeah, well, but... you know, someone who really loves something got to exactly. work on it. And now they're so excited. The and then thing, I did. You know, for every, like, before every world. Exactly. Every party participating you know absolutely and that's the way i look at it yeah. it's not like no nah, i hate that i'm not working being no, too no, no, cool no, no, or no. being that's, too of uh, course not and that that's that's you know, that's that's what i what i heard like the first mm. time you were saying so i was just wondering what kind of projects is like you know well like what did you feel but it, it's totally fine you don't need to name things but it's uh it's totally cool mm. um yeah how much time do you plan in for a project if it's not a deadline oh as long as i can Are you a perfectionist? Like I mean, you the longer like, I work on it every time, or I, well, I, yes, I, I like to cons if I have the time to be. Yeah, I, I I love to kind of go over things. I like to you know finish something and then like don't look at it for three mm -hmm. four days and then come back and then because you will find things that are yeah. wrong or that you don't like or that look good to you at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> after six cups of coffee, but then you know come eight a.m. the next day you're like. I look I, like I drew this when I was drunk. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So there's, there's all of those things that you, you'd love to be able to go back over and, and with, with, you know, a fine tooth comb and, and make mm -hmm. it just perfect. But at the same time, it's like, you got to also let go too. So I get that. And sometimes the best things come out of the panic too. I've had crazy deadlines and I've just mm -hmm. like had to, you know, whip through it. And what came out was like some, some of my best work. So you never know. It's, it's, It's weird, but yeah, in my head, I like to take as long okay. as I can to make it perfect. Uh, speaking of uh, being drunk a little bit, uh, do you have like a favorite beer or some like some some form of beverage you really enjoy? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot. Um, no, um, honest it is it, my favorite like domestic beer. I would say like your run of the mill that you get at the beer store would would be Miller High Life. That's my okay. favorite regular beer. But we've also have a, a wonderful brewery here in Ontario uh, in Hamilton called, uh, collective arts and, uh, they do craft beers and they have a specific beer called saint of circumstance. That is the best craft beer I've ever drank in my <laughs> life. That's fantastic. <laughs> But, wanna, um, I also designed a I'm, bottle. I'm a liquor guy. I'm a liquor guy too. Uh, I actually had a, the chance okay. to once, but it, it didn't work out because I just didn't okay. have the time, but yeah, they actually do that. They yeah, hire artists from all around the world to design the can. So every time they release a can, there's new artwork like every month. Um, But honest, 
honestly, my go-to drink of of, uh, of all time is a rye and ginger. All right. So rye whiskey and ginger ale, not ginger beer, mm-hmm. ginger ale with a little bit of lime on ice. That's my dad's drink. It was my grandfather's drink. I That's just, the family drink. You know, grew up around. Yeah, yeah. It's good on a hot day. It's not too sweet. I'll- uh, that's that's any any. Can I, I can I suggest it. a little uh, something here? Um, how about you do uh, like a very cool five by five, um, commemorating this drink, basically? You know, like kind of like celebrating this drink. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. Saying? yeah, I can call it the Matt Ryan Ginger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because the... Brock is Ryan yeah. Ginger. That was, that was a bad joke. That was a dad It's all joke good. It's all right good. There. You're dad. You're, you're fine. Cut that out. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> no, that's that's actually cool though. No, I'm um, yeah, that that could be something really because cool. Because I really have to say that this this is one artist, um, uh, Viet Anco. That's his name. He he released something with More Art Gallery, the the new gallery from from in the UK there, uh, with one well, my buddy James is uh, one of the founder, um, and mm-hmm. uh, he did this. Um, um, I, I I don't know what what it was called exactly, but I still want to eat or something like that, or uh, travel eats or something like that. And because he wanted the artist wanted mm-hmm. to go to Japan, but COVID uh, didn't make it happen, so he had to stay at home, obviously. And he created like artwork where um where like this is a twenty four by thirty six print, I think, and it has like uh like like tiles in it, uh, like smaller tiles that have each one have different different food he wanted to eat on a trip. Oh, and, okay. And, uh, yeah, and uh, I think that, because I really love to have, like, prints in the kitchen, but I want those, like, the, like uh, the, the, those kind of minimal style with, like, food on it or drinks on it. Um, for example, like the Miyagi mm-hmm. kind of style, like, you know, popping colors and, uh, like, on the album, yeah. you know, and it, Something like a like from a diner or an old kitchen or yeah. uh, you know like a, with with really cool yeah. popping colors and screen prints I think that would look amazing mm-hmm. and like you know having this kind of like mm-hmm. these these kind of styles like it looks like a maybe like sixties like mid century style you know fitting right in there and yeah and I think mm-hmm. yeah if you do drinks like or your your favorite beer maybe and uh, the, the 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 Ryan Ginger and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I think that that would that would be awesome. But that could be a fun series. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I think that's pretty cool. I I, I totally hear you on, on liking that kind of decor and wanting certain decor for certain rooms. Again, I'm so particular, and we're very similar in that way. Like if, you know, what we want hung up and things like that. Exactly. No, I think that's a good idea. I'm gonna let that let that let that yeah, stew if, a little if, bit. If you do that, I'll just I'll just take an AP. That's fine. I'll take that. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you're yeah, lucky. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just um, <laughs> so uh, coming back to prints a little bit, um, how, how do you like your prints come out? Is there anything, um, I mean, you mentioned that you rather want to do licensed prints, um, but is there anything on paper and color you really like to work on? I mean, you mentioned your favorite colors, right? I, I got a rep, red and black print of yours. So and uh, But also uh, the 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 peachy pink uh, purple kind of print so yeah uh but how do you like to, your prints to come out like my like originals like when i'm drawing no i mean in terms of like printing or in terms mean... of printing like do you like would you say i always want chic i always want screen prints i always want lithos uh i want always this egg- oh, eggshell yeah. mohawk number five I always... you know <laughs> yeah yeah um i always will will lean towards um screen prints um definitely that's that's my love but i love really well printed g clays as well like a really thick cotton rag with a lot of texture mm-hmm. and really saturated colors we did um i saw it in, in your little image there you used um the michelle pfeiffer catwoman mm-hmm. uh bruce wayne dance yeah. piece that i did uh deadly or kiss can be deadlier and um i'm not sure the the type of cotton rag that um bottleneck printed that on but it's it's pristine. It's so good. It, the blacks are so black. Yeah. It's, it's very rich. It's an incredible, and, incredible. And print. nice. That's nice too. Oh, thanks, man. Um, but you know, yeah, I do have like a standard paper though, mostly that I use. Um, and it's a French, French paper co whitewash. Okay. So it's like, it's not white. It's not off white. It's right in between. Mm-hmm. I don't usually like to use stark mm-hmm. white papers. Um, it just looks too pristine and needs a little warmth. Yeah, okay. 
So I like to use a, a little bit into a lean into the creams a, a little bit on, on everything that mm. I do. Is the is the is the destroyer one? Is it on pink paper or something like that? No, that's probably on whitewash. That, oh, that's, that's probably right. on yeah, whitewash. Yeah, yeah. So if you were to take like computer paper and put it up, you you'd clearly see that it's not white yeah, white. Yeah, yeah. Because like. I, yeah. I really enjoyed the the paper that uh, Joshua Budik used for his um, for the baseball movie for your opening day one. Ah, what's it called? The movie I forgot the name of the movie. Baseball field of dreams. No, 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 no. It's Sorry, with the but... with the ladies, the the lady baseballer. Oh, oh legal there you go. Thank you so much. Yeah, but he did you did you see the print? In in uh, he did like on on pink yes. lemonade paper, which yeah. is oh my god, this print looks so fantastic. That's awesome. I wish. Yeah, I'm leaning, I'm getting more into colored papers now. I, I really, uh, you know, utilize. Yeah, I, I wish I wouldn't have to move uh, because he told me uh, I could have an AP. But it's like, <laughs> uh, oh, I don't have money right now. I need to move. <laughs> but okay. But I, I, he told me he 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 try to keep it um, as long as possible. So I might have a chance later on. No, he's a good. He's, he's a, a good very dude. Good I'm sure dude. He'll, he'll make sure you're taken yeah. care of. Um, next up, I wanted what is is, is there anything um, like IP or idea that you really want to work on? Is there something old, something new, music, sports, anything you would love to sink your teeth in? Hmm. Well, that's hard off the off the cuff. Um, I mean, like, I think the best way to answer that question is like, what's what's one of my dream clients that I'd love to work with, and and that's got to be the Smashing All Pumpkins. Right. Um, you know, I've managed, I've managed to just. There was a, a weird opportunity to like potentially put my name in mm -hmm. the hat on a very like, not like direct level to them, but for, to redo some artwork for a vinyl mm -hmm. release that they're doing. But I never did. I just back. I chickened out, and I was like, no, I don't know if I want to get that that close to the band that I love that much because you know. Don't meet your heroes and yeah. whatnot, but um, yeah, I would love love to to do some some actual art for the Smashing Pumpkins that you know was um commissioned by the band mm -hmm. or um for yeah. them. That uh, I, I you know I've been lucky enough in in my career to 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 check off a lot of boxes you know of that bucket list of art you know and and in some cases like Bill and Ted getting to do it twice or three times when it comes to soundtracks mm -hmm. and the, all the other different things and you get pins to do and t-shirts and um. Yeah, right. You know, so it, it's it's crazy, um, and uh, but that's that's definitely one that that I would love to do one day. Mm -hmm. You know, but I always worry that like, oh, the day I get a job for the pumpkins, and the day like I, I finish it, I'll die. <laughs> like, there's, <laughs> there's something will happen. Like that'll be you know. So yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I will tag them on the Instagram post. So maybe maybe it happens. Who knows. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so there were a couple of questions from, from the audience like that f would fit in uh, perfectly here. Um, Scott Wazilewski wanted to know, which horror movie would uh, you want to tackle as your next print? By the way, The Green Knight, have you seen The Green Knight trailer that came out today? I just watched it's crazy it today. It's good, right? Um, you want to work on that? Yeah. Um, Rick Gaia was telling me about it yesterday, yeah. and I was like, Green Knight, what's that? And then I saw the trailer today, and uh, yeah, I let, that thing looks yeah. bonkers. That looks mm -hmm. so good. A24 yeah, is just great. killing it. Um, yeah, but horror movie that I really want to do a poster for. That's tough. Um, that's what I mean. I can't think on my feet. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um... I know, I know that there are some in the back of my brain too. I would really love, as as uh, you know, as oversaturated as the property is, I'd really love to revisit Halloween. I know that for yeah. sure. I have ideas in my brain that I would love to tackle that I don't think have really been done yet. Um, which would be the only reason I do Halloween because the the amount of that art mm -hmm. that art for that film that exists out there is infinite. Yeah. <laughs> um, you should have um, done this with the Halloween poster. Psycho, I would love to do Psycho. Psycho's yeah. a big one. Again, I have ideas already for that. Um, yeah, I'd say the, the, uh, Psycho is actually uh, pretty high up. I'd really like to okay, do Psycho. Yeah. There, there was a chance to do uh, uh, Halloween, official licensed Halloween print for the um, Printer and Blood uh, art book. 
Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm in the book. Oh, you're in the book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but we use a pre-existing ah, piece. So okay. I did um for the 40th year anniversary convention um in Pasadena, ah, okay. which I attended. It was like the Halloween anniversary. The, all the cast from every movie, and they had a screening of the new oh, Halloween. Okay, perfect. Jamie Lee Curtis. So I did the official poster for that event, mm-hmm. and I had made prints of it as well, screen prints of it. And uh, so that yeah, that artwork's featured ah, in the okay, book. Okay. I don't even want to say that, but <laughs> it's older work, so yeah. Yeah, be. yeah. Okay, I see, I see. Perfect. Um, there's also another question. Uh, will Angels with Filthier Soul happen this year? Yes. Hopefully. Okay. R- Hopefully, yes. My goal is, to, is yeah, to have that in time for Christmas, but just got to see let's see how, to, how time goes and how much time I have to work on it. But that that was the goal. The goal was to have it out last year. But again, things just got we got way in over my yes. head in, in the amount of it work is I was what doing. It is. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, but yeah, so maybe this year, uh, Ruslan uh, asked the question. So yeah, hope you hope you enjoy that, buddy. Um, okay, now we come to my favorite question: Which classical artist would you like to see make a film poster, and which movie or franchise would it be? Right. Okay. So I am not very well versed in classical mm-hmm. artists. So, I mean, there aren't many that are, you know, um, that exist that aren't revered. Um, you know, and, and so I think I went with what I know and, and you can't, I don't think anybody can argue that Van Gogh's work is um, <laughs> just yeah. incredible. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's, it feels so stupid. I should have like really dug deep and just found like this, a really sort of like niche, you know, uh, classicism mm-hmm. artist, but, uh, I didn't. It's, it's totally fair. You, you <laughs> pick, goes, you, you pick you know, what you want to see. Yeah. But you know what? I think, um, yeah, that the film, there's a film called, um, a trip to Classic. the moon. Um, that's the English translation yeah. by, uh, George yeah. Millet. Uh, and it's a beautiful, beautiful. Have you seen the film. colored version? I have not seen the there colored is a version. colored version. Uh, they done. Uh, they had it on uh, Netflix, or at least in in Germany. They had it. F- oh wait, it was the image of the moon face, but it was like colored orange or yellow. Yeah, I think so. I, like I, I think so. A, and like an ad advertising a colored yeah. version. So there's. But anyways, yeah, no, I have I haven't watched it yet. But it, it's weird because it kind of bounces back off the last question about the mm. pumpkins, but. <laughs> Um, the Smashing Pumpkins did a music video called Tonight Tonight, mm-hmm. and uh, which I actually did a, a private commission mm-hmm. for. Uh, and that video, which if you haven't seen it, you're crazy. Everybody should go watch it because it's probably one of the greatest music videos ever made back in the era of like grandiose music videos, big budgets. and But the whole music video was based off of a trip to the oh, moon. Okay. Um, so all live sets and cardboard sets and moving pro It's just it's beautiful. And so I didn't know about a trip to the moon until I saw that video and I heard later, you know, what it was based on. And then I went and watched the trip mm-hmm. to the moon and I was like, oh man, the, um, this, the design, the aesthetic of this film is so incredible. Yeah. So I just think if Van Gogh's work, especially when you look at something like, you know, um, Roan or, or, um, or Starry Night, it just, it, it lends itself yeah. to that spacey, um, uh, I just I don't know. It just I think it would really work. It really I think so too. With his strokes. The way yeah. He, um, the, right? the um, we have uh, Bella Grace. Uh, you know her. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. She. I think I. Follow her on, uh, yeah. On she stuff. also said uh, when I asked her the question, she said she said she would love to see Van Gogh do Finding Nemo. So that 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 was. Oh, yeah, that was her yeah. choice, and uh, yeah, she's she's actually actually doing that for the book for the art book I'm doing. So, um, oh yeah, that's awesome, that's crazy. Yeah, I guess I didn't think to choose to think of a more modern film, but I can see Van Gogh doing Finding Nemo for sure. All the, nice, all the textures in the water and the, the, yeah. the you know all the little things in, in the ocean, and yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, so I'm. It would just I could just see like a, I could see a massive ocean yeah. escape, but just like. Little orange, you know, yeah, yeah. Nemo and his dad. Just really the pop of color right there, and amongst all the blue. Yeah, beautiful. That's a great. That's a great yep, idea. Yep. So, like a great I'm, matchup. Yeah, I'm excited I, for. I'm excited for the book. I'll, I'll I'll show you off off the air a little something later. So, <laughs> um, 
So before before I let you go, I wanted you to answer something. Um, do you have any tips for the beginners out there, like when it comes to hardware, software, utensils, social media? Um, I don't know. Become an artist. Uh, let 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 the people know. Just a uh, just advice. Yeah, advice, tips, hints, anything you want to let the people know that can like you know get them better, maybe. <laughs> Well, it's the same, you know, it's the same advice that I, I got from Justin, you know, um, years and years ago, which is just make art, just, just make it for the sake of making it, um, make as much as you can, you know, if it's, uh, whether, whatever your goal is, if you're trying to build up a portfolio, like just make the art, it doesn't have to have a purpose other than you wanting to make it, you know, um, that's, you you know, I, I'm, I'm horrible with social media, so I can't have any tips on it, how to necessarily promote your art. I'm really bad with that stuff. But all I can say is just keep working on your craft. Just keep making stuff that you love and always try to make stuff that you love. You know, try to go with your gut all the time. Intuition's a real thing, you know. Um, that's very important. And, and also, you know, a tip of um, that I got from Gary as well. And I've, I've quoted them both on this numerous times too, so they're probably <laughs> bored of it, but... Uh, it's very important to think too, as well as like Gary once told me, you know, it doesn't matter what car you drive to get to the party, as long as you get to the party. And, and that applies on a multitude of levels, but in terms of art, it's like, don't worry about how, what your approach is or how you do things or what the fact that you, you didn't go to art school or, you know, cause that's one thing that I've always, was always, I felt a bit, you know, um, imposter syndrome yeah. about, I guess it's the fact that I didn't have, you know, an education in art and, you know, but the, he made me, you know, it doesn't matter. None of that matters. Art is art. And, and if you love it, you love it. And you just got to make it. And don't worry about that. You know, just do it because you love it. Okay, perfect. Perfect advice. And it'll, it'll, it'll take you. It'll take you, you know. Yeah, uh, you'll, uh, the, the art will find its way. Exactly. Art uh, uh, finds yeah, a way. It's a Jurassic Park quote here. You got to imagine Jeff Goldblum yeah. laying there, you know, <laughs> and having a piece of art. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> okay um yeah and uh, before you can really go uh i just want uh, you to tell the people out there where can they find you on social media your website and stuff like that and before you then go uh give a shout out to any artist friends uh your re real life friends your wife your family anybody you want to give a shout out to uh the stage is yours uh all righty man um yeah you can check me out on a uh... Instagram, it's uh, at Matt Ryan. Website's worksofmattryan.com. I don't know what my Twitter handle or my Facebook is anymore, so you just have to click from the but website, but it's check on the there. link. The, the, the fans, um, uh, fans of um, fans of Matt Ryan uh, Facebook Facebook group. That's uh, that's a good point to start. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? That's actually how I was going to give it. I could shout it to a million people, but I'm going to give a big shout out to everybody in in the fan group. Um, Cause they're just, everyone's so awesome and so kind and uh, they're big, big supporters. And, you know, I owe a lot to them and I'm hoping that I can get in the group a little bit more often and, you know, send the love and do something cool for everybody in there. Cause they're the shit. They are good, good people out there. People. I can tell you that. Um, and you want to give shout out to your family and art, or like, or friends, artists, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'll say hi to all my, my fellow uh, Canucks in uh, Sarah, Josh, Nicole, Gary, Jason, Justin, Paige. I'll say hi to my lovely wife who won't watch this because uh, she likes to make fun of me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to my kids. Perfect. I'll say hi to because maybe they'll see this. But one day. she, the, the kid, yeah, this, the kids probably gonna see it. But but why why uh, you don't want your wife to see it or your wife doesn't want to see it. Oh, I was just making a joke. I was saying she probably won't watch it. I was just joking, though. <laughs> but she will, right? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Because like, I, making I, I, this, we're making this really awkward now, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just I'm dropping the topic. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Matt, so much uh, fun. I had uh, had a great time. Uh, you coming on the podcast? Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, that we uh, Dude, finally likewise, made this man. happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, my pleasure. And we 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 always been in touch, so that's also good. And uh, there yeah. will be 
great stuff coming, maybe even this week. Uh, so keep your keep your eyes peeled. The podcast is going to re- we record this on a Tuesday, and the re- podcast is going to release tomorrow. So um, yeah, maybe even tomorrow or a little bit later in the week, you will see some cool artwork by this man. And uh, yeah, next week, uh, tune in when James and I are going to talk about the latest releases from the last two weeks in the alternative movie postal world. And uh, yeah, thank you again, Matt, for coming on. And Thanks we'll so much, soon. Tom. Take care. Yeah, buddy.